Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm just literally logging on to Facebook and then we're ready to roll. No worries. Okay, I'm going to put you all on mute now. That's okay. That's me, see Cheshire on. Hi, who am I not You sing all, okay. So hopefully you can see me. Let me just see if I can see somebody. Let's see, I could see. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Anthony. I can see you, brilliant. I'm trying to get all this technology up and running. Okay, so welcome to my kitchen today. Um, and today's lesson we're going to show you, I'm just checking Facebook is on, hopefully we are. Um, yes, it is. We're going to show you how to make a quick quiche, really simple. And I've got loads of stuff left in my fridge. I had some stuff at the weekend actually, um, some asparagus, because I've worked out, I've been 11 days now in self-isolation, so quite a few of my stuff, like these tomatoes are going soft, had a little bit of asparagus that wasn't going to last till Monday, so I literally sweated it off with a bit of butter, you see it there, um, some old tomatoes, those two are just on the last legs, and some onions, got some old goat's cheese and froze it in a bag. So once I sweat it off, obviously didn't sweat the goat's cheese off, we put it all in a bag and froze it. So I've just brought it out about two hours ago, so that can be my filling. If you want fresh, obviously, I've still got some um, leeks here, just sweating off, I'm just sweating those off now. So I'm gonna show you how to make the pastry first. Okay. I'm also actually doing a bit of soup on the side. Um, because I had a carcass of a chicken left over from the weekend. So I've been quite busy this morning with all the leftovers. So I'm going to do, not on this slide, but just me in the kitchen. I'm doing a chicken and a leek and potato soup, which I love. So quiche. So I'm just going to give you the recipe. Um, I'm going to hold up the camera as well so you can see it. But also I'm going to shout it out for those who can't see that there. Okay, so you may want to take a screenshot. If not, I have adapted the water slightly. So I'll read it out as we go. In here, I've got 210 grams of flour and I've sieved that, okay? I've also got, now I haven't got any lard, 90 grams of lard, it says. I've only got butter. So it's not the end of the world. It just gives a really nice flavor. What lard does, it makes it nice and short, okay? So it gives a nice sort of flaky feeling. I personally don't like all lard. So if I was, had everything here at home, I'd do half lard, half butter, because I've got the flavor of the butter, but I've got the shortness of the lard in there. So when you're doing it, you just want to add a bit of air. People say to me, I can't make pastry. The hands are too hot. Well, the reason your hands are too hot is because you're working in the bowl and you're rubbing it together. So what you need to do is just literally use your fingers here. Let me just flip that screen up so I can see Anyone on Facebook wants to talk to me? Yeah, let me just switch that down. Here we go. Oh yes, there we go. I can see people now. Hi Jill, Jill's on there. Okay, so just keep going, keep going. Now my kitchen will be nice and cold today. Just keep going. So I'm using the fingertips. If you look at my palms and my hands, there's no flour on there. And that's because I'm not warming it. So people that say my hands are too hot, they're actually just overworking it, that's all they're doing. Also now I've got a pinch of salt. Okay, so some of you might not have stopping to do this, but if you've got flour and butter and a bit of water, you can make a quiche, or oh, obviously some eggs in a minute. Can you hold the ingredients back up again when you can? Oh yeah, sure, just give me a sec. <laughs> okay, perfect. So if you've got a pen there, it's 210 grams of flour, 90 grams of lard, remember I'm using all butter because I haven't got any lard, a pinch of salt, and I've got 85 grams of water going in there. That's it, that's, that's the pastry, really simple. Okay, so once you've got it down to like what we call a fine breadcrumb, see my dog on the floor there in the way. So it's nice and fine, if you see that. There might be the odd little bit of butter, but don't panic about that. 
Now I have made some earlier and um, because I'm baking the blind in the oven so I just need to keep my eye on them because I'll get chatting and I'll forget they're in there. Hi everybody on Facebook, thank you for joining us and on the Zoom. Right, okay, so that's ready now. So literally make a little well in the centre and pour your water in. I always just hold that a tiny fraction. And don't stick your hand in the middle of the water, just use the bowl, go around the edge, and that way you're not going to get your hands looking like a load of glue in there and work it together. Okay? If it feels a little bit tight, then add that last drop of water. It depends on your flour really, where you put your flour from, how much water it takes. I'm just going to add that last touch in there. Turn that oven off, stove off. Okay, and bring that together. Now you could let this rest in the fridge for about half an hour, but this is a pastry you can use straight away as well. So what you might want to do is leave this to rest where you get your prep done, your filling done. But I'm going to show you. Now I don't want to overwork it, I'm not making a bread. It might look like I'm just actually kneading this gently together. Okay, once I've got that together, I'll put it onto the table. Thank you, Rona. Have I dropped something already, Rona? And just give it a very gentle knead. Okay, and that's it done. You can cling film that, put that in the fridge and rest it. But we're not going to do that now because I want to show you what we're doing. Checking that on. Yep, we're okay. Right, so quiche. Let me just show you that recipe, Jill, before I forget. Again, I'll hold that up for you. Let's wash my hands. There we go. Can you see that there? Just take a quick screenshot. Otherwise, it is on my Facebook page as well, that recipe. But just change the water to 85 grams. Okay, so quiche, you can make it in anything. I was having a look around the house last night to see what I had, to see what people would be using. Um, I would normally make it in a big quiche ring like that, but that's quite a lot of quiche, you know, so you can also use one of these dishes. I'm not that keen on these dishes because they're quite hard to get underneath. I first do something without a bottom on it in a base. But when you're making a quiche, if you're not very good at lining, what happens if you put the egg mix in, it can come out the side of the oven. So if you're not the best at lining pastry, use a dish with a bottom on it. Okay. I quite like these little ones, individual ones, and that's what I've done today because not everybody in my family likes stills and I like stills and my daughter doesn't. So doing them individually, you can then just make them individual flavours. You can put a base of leek and onion in there and then change them as you go. So I'm going to use one of these. Let me just trim a bit of this off. Okay. So just work that gently together. A little bit of flour, not so much flour. Let me get rid of those bits in there actually. Okay, so just a little bit of flour, skim it down. These are non sticks, so they don't need lining, but you may need to just gently brush in a little bit of butter. And when you roll, just do one roll and turn, one roll and turn. And if you keep turning your pastry, then it's not going to stick. Okay. Now, the mistake people make is the pastry shrinks. And the reason why your pastry is shrinking is the way you're lining your moulds. So, obviously this is a small mould, so I can use it. If you're using one of the bigger ones, use your rolling pin to pick it up with, okay? And then place it over. Just be careful that you don't touch top of it. Once you've got that then, you need to lift the pastry up and push it down gently, okay? Don't stretch it, push, pull the pastry up and, and push it down into the corner. And what we're looking for is like a 90 degree corner. Okay, if you don't get that 90 degree corner, what will happen is it will burst. When the liquid goes in there and it starts to warm in the oven, it will burst open. Bruno, come on, bed. This little brown nose there poking up. 
Okay, so I've gone all the way around and I've made sure I've gone all the way right into the corners. Before I even cut it, I'm not sure you'll be able to see on the camera, but you should be able to see a seam in there. Okay, and that just shows me I've got right down to the bottom. If it's like that, on that angle, it's like a ski jump, that's no good. That means your page is going to shrink and the mix might burst in the oven. So I just take the edge of the rolling pin and cut it off. Okay. Sweep that round and that's ready to go. So that recipe will do about five or six of those. So once they're done, then we're going to line them with beans. Now let me just check the oven, just to check what's going on in there. One sec. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to put the beans in in a second, but I just want to take these out. Now, I've had those in there for 17 minutes, okay? And I've, I've actually, yeah, I'll show you how to make those, but I've made those with some baking beans and cling film. And that's the easiest way because they just pluck out. So they're not quite done. Now, we talk about baking blind. I always, always bake my quiches blind because I'll end up with a soggy bottom. Pastry goes in about 185 degrees, so it's a nice hot heat that's gonna really bake that off. If I lift the bottom up, you can see the bottom is actually nearly done. The top isn't, it's a bit too sweaty at the moment. So I'm gonna just pop that back in the oven for two minutes, that's it, just to seal that edge off. Reason being is, if you don't do this, you'll end up with a soggy base, and there's nothing worse than a soggy base on the quiche, I hate them. So you want a nice crisp base. Okay, so move those out of the way. Then you're gonna get some cling film. Any, any comments here, are we okay? No, we're all right, we're all watching, fantastic. Say where you're from. <laughs> thank you very much, I see a few old students popping on there, that's great, Lauren, thank you. Thing. she misses the, the lessons okay so put that on there i will get used to this will be for my kitchen actually no traveling i'm quite liking this how about you guys sitting in bedrooms and at home put your cling film in there now i know what you're asking yourself is that cling film going to melt in the oven no it doesn't melt in the oven it shrinks slightly but it won't melt so pop your beans in there and again the, the next mistake people do is they don't fill the beans full enough and the edges fall in. The whole idea of baking beans is to keep the edges round. Okay, keep them upright. So I tend to slightly overfill the mold of anything and then just pull cling film gently, not too hard. And that's it, done. And as it bakes, that'll just go together and you'll be able to pluck it out like I did before. That's gonna take about 17 minutes, that's it. Be careful not to pull the cling film too much because otherwise that bit of pastry there is gonna fall down. So that's the baking beans. And um, keep the baking beans. Um, what's our baking beans? Okay, so baking beans, literally, I've looked in my cupboard, these are quite old actually. I've got rice, I've got lentils, I've got pulses, anything you can find, just uh, throw in there. I'm loving this, thank you. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, I've got lots on today, which is lovely. Let me just check my chat on my, um, my, just give me one second. I've got something here. What we're saying, no, that's fine. I've only got two. Okay, brilliant. So that's the baking beans, right. So the next job is to make the filling for the quiche. It is a very simple quiche. And there's not lots of people make this at home, really. And it really is simple. So I don't want to overdo those, I think they're done. So I'll just grab that little mitt and put those on. Yeah, they're done. Okay, now the next mistake people make when they do quiche is if it gets to turn the oven down. So we've done the pastry 185 degrees, nice and hot. But what we want to do now is get the egg mix ready. Now egg mix cooks at about 150 degrees. So we're going to turn the oven down to 150. If you don't do this, you'll end up boiling your quiche and we've got lots of holes in there. So when you go out to a restaurant, you see holes in the quiche. It just means that they put it back on a high temperature and they haven't baked it properly. So 
right, in my pan as I'm talking, I've got 250 mils of milk. Just bring that to the boil, okay? I've got my filling here, so I'm just gonna pop that in. There. Okay, I like quite a lot of filling in mine. As I say, just have a look in your fridge. You might have bacon, ham, chicken, you name it, you can put it in there. Broccoli, grated broccoli is nice. Just to grate some broccoli up. Okay. So I know I'm having for my tea tonight. That'll do us. Works out about right, actually fine there. So they're ready to go back in the oven in a moment. Then I've got two eggs. Okay. Just crack those two eggs into here. Bit of salt. Always put salt and pepper. Now, I don't know if you know, who likes egg custards? I'm not a personally big fan of egg custards. But this is, without the salt and pepper obviously, exactly the same as an egg custard mix. Egg and milk and sugar makes an egg, sweet egg custard. Egg and milk and pepper and salt make a quiche. So it's very, very similar. So just beat that together. the boil. Excuse me, Marilla. It's important to bring that milk to the boil. If you don't bring it to the boil, we don't have to, but it just cooks quicker. Okay, the, the less time this egg costs in the oven, the better. We just want to set it, finish. Okay. I have got some Stilton on there, I'm a right Stilton fiend. It was left over from the bread the other day, so I might just put a bit of Stilton on mine because I love Stilton. And again, if you're making bread with Stilton, so many people throw that crust away in quiche or anything, bread, you can use the crust. It's really, really nice. It's a great flavour. I won't I eat it. Put that in there. That's my one for later. Okay, so that milk's going to boil now. Just always put your hot milk onto your eggs, so hot onto cold. Don't go the other way around, you're going to end up scrambled egg. Put that on there. Just stir it together. That's it. And then we're going to pass it. We always pass it. Just because egg tends to have those little snotty bits and we don't want that in our quiche. It so top that up now be careful that you don't go over filling it and the egg mix then would fall down I'll pick one up and show you it would fall down just into the side there okay because if it falls down into the side there then it's going to stick and you're not going to get them out so you'll be serving that, that uh, pot for your dinner as well to get it out but as long as you don't overfill them, you want them full enough, so you've got enough egg mix in there. So I just try and get them right to the top. I also do it near the oven. I'm not walking around the kitchen with them. Okay. As I say, you've got some fresh tomato there if you wanted to put that on top. It's totally up to you what you want to do. Pop those back in the oven. Temperatures down, yeah, perfect. And they're going to go into the oven. 150. Now, depending on your ovens and what you're using, all I'm doing is I'm waiting for the egg mix to, to set. Because it's boiled, it's hot, it's going to be a lot quicker. So if you leave it out for 10 minutes, it's going to take longer in the oven. Just until I'm going to tap the tray, it's going to be set like a jelly. If it starts to come up, it means you've overcooked it. So don't overcook it. It's about 15 minutes, I would say. 12, 15 minutes. Have a look if it's not quite set, leave it a bit longer. Any questions? That is it for today. I've got my lovely soup here, we'll put that back on the boil. We're gonna get on with that now. Um, 
But yeah, so Wednesday's lesson, we're going to be making fritter rolls. Now, I know some of my students, I know Anthony has, because see Anthony making it, Anthony's made some fritter rolls already with me, Anthony? Um, so yeah, fritter rolls, we're going to make some pastry cream and we're going to do some chocolate sauce. Now, I have got no cream, so that's why I'm doing um, fritter rolls. Hi, Paul, ask you, how are you? Nice to see you popping on. Um, so I've got no cream yet, so I'm going to do pastry cream instead. Chocolate sauce, we may have to cheat a little bit with that because I've got no cream and I normally make mine with double cream and chocolate, but I'll show you a few little tips on Wednesday. So thank you so much for watching today. Um, it's been a pleasure as always. I will post a picture once they're done and I'll see you on Wednesday at one o'clock. Thanks a lot, everybody.